I'm miserable. Um, My life is a joke. Oh, <laughs> shit. Now I feel bad yeah. for wearing this. <laughs> Jack walked in today and he goes, I don't even care. I don't even care. It's weird how the human body reacts to things. <laughs> like, just, just want it to be done, you know? Like, one way or another, it's just like, I'm in pain. Yeah. Like, it's just so torturous to go through seven games of this shit. Like, yeah. I've always wondered how Essendon would go in a grand final, like how I would react. Mm. But at least it's, you know, it's, it's one game. It's one game, yeah. This is just... And you have to wait so many days. And, like, yeah. I'm not on social media after a loss because it's just so reactionary. Such a hole, such oh, a pit. Like, you could, Tatum could have 25, 5, and 5 in a win. And everyone's like, oh, he's finals MVP. And he could have 25, 5, and 5 in a loss. And it's like, he didn't have 35. Mm. You know, like, no matter... I'm going to bring that yeah, stuff up. But no matter what it is, <laughs> after a loss, you just got to avoid social media. That's it. Yeah. This this period sucks. Mm. Anyway, well, just for our little intro here, we'll get into all that soon. I did have something I wanted to bring up. I uh, was in Queensland over the weekend. Um, and Taylor and I, we went and caught up with her friend in Queensland. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of just won't say his name, not that he'll be tuning into this, but he did something, we went out for brunch and he did something that I sort of just couldn't fathom. Anyway, he orders, um, Avo Smash Classic. I hope he, I hope he hears this. Cause <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he orders Avo Smash. It's called Smashed Avo, by the way. Smashed Avo. I don't fucking, I don't eat it. As you can tell, I don't like Avos. Um, you don't know either, do you? Nah, not about it. No. Nah. Uh, Smash Avos, you know, comes out all this shit. One of the things that comes on the plate is a poached egg. Good. With, like, lovely seasoning. It's got some, like, I reckon there's some chilli seasoning on it, right? Lovely. Anyway, he puts it to, the, he grabs the poached egg, puts it to the corner of the plate, all seasoning, like, perfectly there. Anyway, you know, we're chatting, blah, blah, blah. He eats it. I'm sort of keeping an eye on it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, goes the whole the whole outing, the whole meal, doesn't eat the poached egg. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? And it, and you know, again, you know when you if you just <laughs> ask for no egg if you don't want to eat egg. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not in the mood to be dealing with dumb people. I started to think like, was it on the menu? Did he not know? But how do you grab the? If you're getting even any dish with an egg on it, have you ever had an egg dish with like? Uh, sorry, with a you can move poached eggs. No, 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 no. Can you, like, not eat the egg in any egg dish? Oh, God, no. Egg's, like, one of my favourite foods. That's right. Poached egg. Beautiful. And the seasoning, it was some, se- it was some like, orangey red chilli powder. It was probably, like, a chilli salt or something. Yeah, yeah, and I was so intrigued, and he just perfectly grabs it, pops it to the corner of the plate. I'm like... Oh, you God. Should, what you should have done, got a straw, <laughs> pop it into the yolk, and <laughs> suck the yolk out through it. Welcome to the Bronx Sheer Basketball Show. I have a deflated... My name is Nathan Callan. <laughs> I have a deflated... Oh, God. He's, he can't even feel his spine. He's, he's, got, the, he's got the hood on. He, I have a deflated... I don't want anyone to look at me. I have a, a very sad co-host here yeah. in Jack Lynch. Um, the Celtics today, just a couple of hours ago, Lost game five in San Francisco to the Golden State Warriors. It is now 3-2 to the Warriors. We didn't chat last week. You were too busy setting up your other shit team's uh, 150th anniversary. <laughs> I've got a good life, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> He's just staring into the universe. <laughs> just thinking, fuck me. What have I done? Well, Jack, need I ask, how are you, mate? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Two one up in the garden. Yeah. Things I'm, are I'm well aware, out. mate. I'm well aware. You even cheated and put the ring five centimeters <laughs> higher in the T D garden. What the fuck's with that? It's um Tom Brady's deflate gate, now it's a ring gate. <laughs> <laughs> Was it only one ring? Did you look into it? I did. It was just one I ring, yeah. Saw the headlines. It's it's I would probably kick up a bigger stink than they kicked up about it. About well, that was after the... Because um, it was like that for the shoot around the day before, supposedly. Mm. So both teams shot on it the day before and no one noticed yeah. it. And then day of is when it gets brought up. But I think it was after the toss when they'd chosen ways. I thought it was after just simply game three. It was after, wasn't it after they lost? That's what I thought. Or was it after... It was, it was in pre-game warm-up. 
of game three or four? I thought it was. I felt like I read it after they lost. I'm like, oh, it's a bit like, you know, they're bringing up the rings, the rims. No, it was in the pre-game warm-up. They stopped and were like, hang on, this of is of three of one of them. Yeah, I think three. Yeah. Okay, well then that's fine. So they, they warmed up on it the day before, and then someone's like, "This is a bit odd." <laughs> yeah, it. but that yeah, I personally that's something that I would crack it at. Anyway, Warriors, one way or another, they. I reckon up... it, I thought it was odd too, but I reckon that must be more common than we realise. Yeah, that's if right. they're like, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Maybe, the, yeah, that's right. That's probably that's the case that it doesn't happen in the. It happens Orlando versus Washington, and mm. they delay the game by twenty minutes, and no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so where do we start? So, how were you feeling when you guys were two one up? Wor- like I was worried. Yep. Why is that? Because I, it's so fucking hard to win two games in a row in the finals, especially against this Warriors team. That and like you can tell, like we both said before the series, like pretty evenly matched. I picked Boston. You picked Golden State in seven, no, didn't you? I picked Boston Did in five or six. That's how I've, it's my looking. Memory. I don't know. But yeah, go on. What I was going to say is a lot of I mean, the media se- seemed to go mostly Warriors, and I think the the put, like, thing that put them over the edge was experience and that's been without a doubt the biggest difference so far is the lack of turnovers the Boston's I think put better stretches of defense together but haven't been able to do it for a full game whereas Golden State just consistent just doing what they need to do getting the job done yeah it just it like so to put the informal blanket over it it does actually look like you've got a team that hasn't been in the finals against a team which I don't necessarily always buy into yeah but but this is a perfect example of one of those times like when turnover turnovers are an issue, live ball turnovers especially. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Jason Tatum sneakily creeping up on LeBron James. He's got it. Number one. Oh, he got. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I love that record. I love any turnover record because yeah. you look at it and it's like they're the best players ever. <laughs> I, yeah, I just love it when it's like Westbrook turnovers. Yeah. That's my favorite. Um, but yeah, so the blanket is that the Warriors are more experienced. Steph Curry is mm. more ex- experienced. Tatum is not even 24, is he? Is he 24 now? He's turning 24 this year, later this year. Maybe Ta- Tatum and Brown aren't like 24. Maybe Brown is. Um, yeah, and I'll slowly get to that point that I want to make. But overall, I, at this point, at 3-2, my prediction of Celtics f- in 5 or 6, it doesn't feel all that strong. But at the same time... As, mu- as well as these last two games have gone for Golden State, I still can't help, and I don't want to get you too excited, but I still can't help but feel like the next two games can go... It's not over. Boston, Definitely not. Boston's way. Um, like as soon as the game finished, and I told you before, like, I don't care. Mm. Which obviously I do, but like that's just my body just like trying to react. But I've got no doubt Boston's going to win game six. Okay. It's just gonna, we're just going to come in and like... It's going to be like game six against Milwaukee. There's no fucking about... No looking at the rest, just go in and get the job done and then just see what happens. Yeah. And I've just got that feeling. And if that happens, I truly think that anyone can take Game 7. Game 7s are... There's, I would love to see a, a history of Game 7s in terms of just statistic variances because yeah. I feel like in every Game 7, something weird happens. Like yeah. Kelly Olynyk goes off against Washington back in the day or even Grant Williams this year. Um. Golden State versus Cleveland 2016 when neither team scored for four and a half minutes. Like, there's always one thing that's just... How did that ha- not happen all series and it's happened in a game seven? Yep. Yep. No, it's um, it's scary because I am trying to... I am supporting the Warriors. But I don't know. It's... it's I don't know. I honestly didn't think that uh, they could beat you in the, in the garden. So, on that sort of aspect or on that hand, I, I sort of... Now that I've seen it, I feel like it is a possibility with game six. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I truly, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same. Obviously, a lot of people who picked the Warriors and were, yeah, picked the Warriors are probably thinking, yep, this is going the way I thought it would. This Whereas, happens every series when someone goes 3 2 up. Yeah. Everyone's reaction is, oh, it's done. Yeah. Same when Miami was, or when Boston was 3 2 up against Miami, every single fan was like, oh, Boston is six. Mm. When Milwaukee was up, 3-2 against Boston, everyone thought the same thing. Yeah, I, I yeah, I was so worried when it was 2-1 and it was... Because you guys, yeah, won that, that third game mm. 
And I was we had so, a chance to make it. That was massive. Like everyone knows, three one Pivotal. down. Yeah. It's only 2016 that it's the comeback has happened. That game four was, it was a must, mm. and um, I was terrified. And I th- I didn't think that uh, the the Warriors could win in the Garden, but they did. So yeah, in terms Steph going for 42 and Boston just completely mm. losing at the end. Well, let's talk about Steph Curry. So he went for was it 42 or 43? Oh. One of those two. Something. Um, like I said, I don't, after a game, I don't check anything. <laughs> and he made seven threes. Yeah. Today, none. Today, it seemed that the Celtics switched up the tactics instead of drop coverage. It's like... I'm playing quite high on him. It's yeah. like, yeah, going at him. And, and get the ball out of his hands. Get the ball out of his hands. And don't let him get the ball, especially. That's right. And then I think that at one point in the third quarter, of course, you guys took the lead. It seemed like... Things were going to start happening, and I'm sure you will come in here um, and agree when I say that there was a bit of home whistle about today. There has been a bit of home whistle about the that series. I reckon today was... I don't think either team benefited today. Mm. Today was one of the worst ref games I can imagine <laughs> in terms of... like, But both ways. <laughs> like, there were some absolutely atrocious calls both ways that just didn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just the way that, especially in the NBA, the way that the officiating is so obvious is like, I know it happens in every sport, but because the NBA is such a game of runs, mm. the officiating is so molded to that. It's like, okay, what is more, you know, the the entertaining sort of structure or what's the entertaining mold at the moment for we can sort of help? That's what it feels like at all times. Going for the Warriors... The Warriors were starting to crumble in the third quarter and it felt like, not that it was the worst thing ever, but it felt like if the Warriors wanted to start playing good, the whistle was going to help them play yeah. good. Um, I'm not a Warriors fan for all our, all our newcomers. I'm a Sixers fan. I'm just going for the Warriors because I hate the Celtics. I just hate the the inconsistencies of it. Yeah. And especially like one of the down... Like I went to the... Um, was watching some community football here in Australia. So just low level, no no big screen, no replays. And the umpires seem good because you don't get the benefit of seeing everything in slow motion. And then, of course, if you're an NBA referee, you dissect every single game on tape, much like teams do and work out you know, inconsistencies. And that's where the issue starts to, I think, is created when you start learning players' behaviours. And like for someone like Draymond Green who gets the biggest leash of all time in terms of he like just abuses refs and gets nothing. Yeah. And then like Ime Udoka got that tech today for not saying much. Yeah. There was a few out of bound causes. One on one in Boston's favour where Derek White, you know, got verticality, no call, out of bounds, Celtics ball, but he threw it out of bounds and the same thing happened to Curry later on. But then you get the um the smart flop. Which watching live, I thought that was a flop when he's when Clay clearly pushed off him. Yeah. Then you get the replay and say, like, oh no, he's, that's one of the most blatant pushes you've ever seen. Yeah. So there's one against Boston there, and then you see it go the other way when Jordan Poole grabs Smart's arm. They back to back, <laughs> and it's like this is where the, it's over refed in terms of they watch too much footage and they start to learn yeah. players' behaviours. Yeah, yeah. Because there's they give players benefit of the doubt and then they don't for others. And it's, I don't know how to fix how it. How bad was the pool one? The pool one was shocking. He doesn't even get him. No. His arm just goes near his face. I mean, he sort of brushes him on the shoulder. Yeah. And I think it's but I don't, t- I, Tony Brothers. Both calls I thought were right live. That's the thing. Yeah. And that's how good these players are at what they do. Mm. But. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one in terms of like, maybe if, it, if they're going to be bad on the whistle, maybe they should just put away the whistle. Like, you, yeah. maybe you want Let them that, play physical. you know, and that's what they normally do anyway. Who knows? But what, what I was getting to was I think that sort of today the, 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 the refs obviously helped and also the crowd helped um, and just little things, you know, the, the Celtics did start to look, you know, obviously they were getting frustrated with the refs, but the Celtics were actually starting to look a bit discombobulated in the fourth yeah. in terms I mean, of like Taylor, what, uh, Taylor, Jalen and Tatum <laughs> didn't come off the court and I think you could tell they yeah. just couldn't get into their sets yeah now let's get to uh, so what did I even go on about Steph well yeah so Steph um, killed it in in game four and then this game had no threes and was shut down and that's so interesting because after game four I mean you said you haven't been going on social media 
the whole of the internet or at least NBA Twitter, but I think like most of the internet, you know, like, of course, he deserves Stephen Curry's a god yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And yes, and I've got the jersey here. I love him and it was great. But I'm going to be honest, I was sort of, um, I felt a bit vindicated in a way because of what I've said about Steph in the past and his legacy and his ranking and all these types of things. Because look what happened today. At the end of the day, he's a point guard shooter. And yes, his gravity helped them win today. However, um, and then I'll get to this on Tatum as well, in terms of like, I just don't, I just think that there's guys who today then put up still, even when the threes aren't going in. Mm, they like, still get is, their 25. And this is where we go to, not that I put him in the same tier, but this is where we go to like the LeBrons and co. They find a way even when their favorite shot isn't going in. You know, whether it's through, you know, contact and stuff like that going to the rim, but I know different types of players. I just wanted to note that Stephen Curry, while he is going to go down as one of the greatest players of all time. Top 15. Yes. Um, he's not in that top. Of, of, not the, of that, that, like, top, top, top 15. Tier. And, like, you could argue top 10. I don't think he's there yet. But, like, with anyone in the top 20, you can probably argue they're top 10 if you don't pull some stats yeah. their way. But if anyone in that group, I think he's probably put together the most average to bad finals games. Yep. Yep. And Which is, there still isn't a lot. He's been great in the finals. It's just yep. the 2016 one definitely gets highlighted. 2015, he was okay. Yep. Um, 2016 has some shockers. And then KD comes, so you don't really look at his, you know. And if this goes there. to game seven, and my head just goes straight to 2016, if this goes to game seven, say you guys do the same tactics and just say because of the game seven nerves and everything like that, fatigue and all that, just say we do get like an 80 versus 80 scoreline or 85 yeah. versus 85 scoreline and the role players aren't doing what they do. I don't know. I don't know who I sort of want more, a Tatum type player or a Curry type player in that exact situation yeah, as good as Steph is, is what I'm trying to... I, I feel like we had a There's good, a lot of variance in his performances. Yeah, I feel like... And it is just because of the type of player he is as yeah. well. Shooters shoot, shooters go through slumps, as they say, and they're going to keep shooting. He'll shoot out of it. But, yeah, just in terms of when people try and bring him after game four, when people try, try and bring him up another tier where he's not, in my opinion, that's a good summary today of the guys in that next tier would would find a way to still get like a real good production or high volume production. I think his issue is, and it's it's hardly an issue because he's you count on two hands how many like he hasn't had many bad playoff games really. Yeah. But his issue is he's just not big and strong. Like mm. you mentioned LeBron. Like if LeBron's having a bad game, he just drives and drives and drives and gets to the line. Yep. Giannis is the same. Jimmy Butler's the same. Anyone like that that's just strong enough to force their way inside will get to the line and find you know, at least get the scoreboard ticking and then we'll usually find their groove. Whereas he just doesn't have that that option. Yeah. And talking about legacies and stuff like that, we will get to today's segment soon, um, which is Warriors Celtics, all time combined starting five. Interesting. 2008 Celtics lineup done. <laughs> uh, can't wait for that one. Other players, me and you in our this um, series combined uh, eight man rotation. We both landed on clay out of Paul Clay Wiggins. Wiggins. Well, I told you when he's like last year or the year before, when Wiggins was sort of arrived, he was already showing signs of becoming a nice. De I'm being. I'm not being nice enough. Not a nice defender, a good defender, and now we're really seeing some great stuff. Imagine if. I mean, the thing is that they have the three of them, but imagine if. Wiggins had Clay or Paul's offensive ability. This series would be over already. I think this highlights. You know, there's so many players that come out of college and they're like, "He's going to be a defensive monster," and they just don't. Mm. And there's been so many times where players like this have gone from num being the number one option, putting up shit stats on, or you know, getting their points, but on shit efficiency, and then they go to an another team where they're you know the second, third, fourth option, depending on who's on the court. And it's like, all right, I've got all this energy now. I yeah. can actually lock in. And it's he's finally showing for the first time in his career, he's 6'8", 
you know, is you know six eight height, seven foot wingspan or whatever it is, ridiculous athleticism, and he's locking down Tatum. Yeah, and I think it just goes to show how many players don't put in effort on defense in the NBA. <laughs> the the and this takes me to, you know, how funny is it, especially in the regular season? You have your Andre Drummond, and you brought him up before. About, you know, there's guys that average 14 rebounds a game yeah. and stuff like that. But I feel like rebounding in the regular season is such a... It means nothing. It means, it means nothing. It all. means absolutely nothing. And year after year after year, you, you've been following basketball longer than I have. Many people who probably, you know, watch your show have been following basketball longer than I have. I've only been doing it for 10 years. Year after year after year, I'm like... Rebounding is one of the most important um, skills or parts of the game because second chance points, defensive re- not allowing yeah. second chance points or getting more. It's how to finish a defensive possession. I th- I think about the it kills me, but I think about the Marcus Soul and Sergi Barker from 2019, and those motherfuckers. <laughs> didn't Joel's leave. actually for a center not a great rebounder. No, he's it not. kills me to say. Like for all the athleticism, he spends I, half the time on the floor. That's why. <laughs> for all, all the athleticism he has over J- Jokic, Jokic is a great rebounder for a guy that doesn't. Jokic is the strongest bloke in the NBA. Yeah, like he just pushes people out of the way. And Andrew Wiggins, apart from the defense, but this is all part of it. The rebounding that him and Kevon Looney mm. are coming in and doing—it's just such an important part. There's, yeah, like you said, there's rebounding in the regular season, and. It doesn't impress when 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 they've got the um, defensive player of the year voting and they're like, who's going to be the finalist? And it's they put up all these stats. They say rebounds, and it's like that rebounds doesn't mean anything. But then come playoff time, rebounding by committee is the number one thing. Just as a team, you cannot let players do it. Like, you know they play, you can't let players get offensive rebounds and get the ball back up. And the Warriors aren't planning on Wiggins to get sixteen, but it's. Looney blocking out it's Draymond yeah. blocking out and that's obviously Wiggins is going to get the credit and it's like Kawhi he was one of, he's one of the best rebounders ever at the small forward position and it's a it's just willingness more than anything else just to like alright we've done our job we've got the off- I've got, we've got them to miss a shot here but the offensive possession is still not done until we got this ball Yeah, and they're all just flying for it and the way that the Celtics offense is as well with all the threes and stuff like that obviously you got Rob Williams which is still um Hoddling, is that a word? Hobbling. 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 <laughs> um, hobbling around. But apart from that, the way that the Celtics and the modern NBA is, with all the threes jacking up and if there's no three step in floater <laughs> from Marcus Smart or whatever, Tatum will do the, the hard and long arms down below. Anyway, shots are sort of always looping up. Yeah. There's not a lot of fucking layups, right? It's just so important. And these rebounds from Wiggins are just looking massive. And I, I I believe he was noted to be not a great positional rebounder sort of in his early career and out of college and stuff like that. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, I think the, the other thing is that Boston's putting so much effort on Looney. Mm. And it's that thing. Someone's got to step up and he's doing it perfectly. Yeah. And then obviously there's the task of guarding Jason Tatum, which... Let me just stop it here with Wiggins and say he's doing great. However, let's get on to Tatum. So he's you, guarding himself you, all the time. You mentioned at the start, uh, either before in the intro or when we got into it, that you know when he puts up twenty five and five and five, whatever in a win, great. And when he doesn't in a loss, when he sorry, when he puts the same numbers in a loss, he's shit. I'm going to give you. We might start a new sort of uh, segment or gimmick on this show. I was trying to think of a good name. All I could come up with is sweet and sour. What would you like first, the sweet or the sour? <laughs> There's been a lot of sweet in my life lately, so I'll right, go to the sweet. We'll go to the sweet. You know I want to go to the sour anyway, so that's great. The sweet is, he's young. He's young. <laughs> we said before, at the, at early in this season, we did who can win the championship. And if this keeps going, the crazy part is, you guys can still win it, like from, yeah. from here. But if this keeps going the way it's been going these last two games... Um, Jason Tatum, the sweet is that he's young. The Celtics, the Jalen, Jason, the core is young. Marcus Smart's not old. All these things, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. We got a young guy in the in the finals. How can we rely on it? The sour is 
I do not want to hear... Again, this is funny because it could happen. You guys could win the championship. But as it stands, I do not want to hear anyone trying to put him in the top five or even, sorry, but even like the top eight, seven. I probably... I don't even know if I've got him in my top ten going into next season. We'll do that eventually. But this whole, oh, he's, just, he's Tatum now, top five. But, you know, when he has a great game, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, but he's not that yet. He's just, as I've tried to say to you before, he's just not, and that's fine because he's not even 24. He is not at that level yet where he is just taking the fucking series by the balls. Yes, he plays well, but these guys in the top five do that. They're like, no, we're not losing. How many times have I said there's, there's 10 top five guys <laughs> in the NBA? But the the mainstays, and and we sort of yeah. listed them off earlier in the season. You, I would still, for, for for until further notice, LeBron, Giannis. You got to say Embiid now, um, Jokic. Um, probably got to add now Steph back in there, and um, probably KD. Did you say Giannis? Yeah, Giannis, KD. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the main ones. I'm probably missing a pr- really obvious one. But then there's like also um, Kawhi. Yeah. yeah. Butler when he wants to. Butler when he wants to. But you look at Tatum, and I think I think this is what's going to happen. I thought about this the other day. This is going to be like a 2007 LeBron run where he flies through everyone and then loses in the finals, and it's like, oh, he's no good at lost in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's taken down Giannis. He's taken down Jimmy Butler. Like, I know he's... There's been things on his side and whatnot. But if anyone's putting Jimmy Butler ahead of him, they can go and fuck off <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Well, we talked about this. No, but we talked about this after or just nearly at the end of that series. Consistent. And I said to you right now, Jimmy Butler's a better player than because I'm sorry, but that he, he is. He went, what, three games where he didn't score 10 points? I know, but like the... If you want to talk about Steph before, that you know, he's Steph still put up, what, 16 today or whatever it was? No, but Steph... He's in the top tens all time conversations is what I talk about. But there's consistency is probably the number one thing you got to do in the playoffs. Mm. And Tatum's as bad as he's been for periods, he's still getting his 20 or whatever it is. And yeah, it, but it's still, a pointless 20, you know, and you know that. But when he, he's still averaging what, eight assists for the, this finals run, he's still he's still a plus on the court for Boston. It's yeah. not like he's it's not like he's costing them the series like no, 2012 no. Westbrook was. No, no, no. Any chance to diss Westbrook, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all I'm saying is, I think you know, and the Warriors are the same, although Steph is another level. These are two collect. These are two collective units. Steph is another level, though. But when we bring up Steph and we bring up Tatum, for me, it's again, it's, I have to say, it's funny because you guys, he could still lead you guys to the championship. For now, for me, Tatum is still just not. He hasn't graduated yet to in the same tier. You know, you can go form and stuff like that, but in the same tier of those uh, those guys I mentioned before. And maybe... And you got, you got to do it for three years to get in that top five category. Yeah. And he's probably... He might be a year away. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I'm not even sure, like... Hmm. Like, I may have him in the same tier as... I, I probably do have him in the same tier as uh, Butler and Doncic and that. It's just that that next tier up. I know some of the guys in that ne- next tier, like Embiid, haven't had like playoff success, but there's just like you see Embiid in that game six when we lost to. I don't. I hate. To, sorry to bring up the Sixers, but in that game six loss, torn thumb, broken eye, and he's literally the only guy out there, you know, who kept us in it for three quarters type thing or two and a half quarters. Anyway. Tatum if, if is for example, young. if for example, and B doesn't make the finals next year or the year after, or whatever. Mm-hmm. At what point is like, oh, maybe he's he's getting stats in the regular season, but doesn't translate to playoff wins. How long does he earn that spot in the top ten without any success? <sighs> I don't know. It really, it really depends on the the collective. I know he's. Now, because Ben's gone, I know now Joel's got the added pressure of being the common deno- common denominator of all the failures. But we've never actually had a really smart collection of players. You know, the Tobias Harris Nothing Max suited him. I, that's just the truth. The Tobias Harris Max has, uh, you know, yeah. I, I still, I know it's excuses, 
But I still feel like, you know, there's other players that have those excuses as well. It's like, I mean, well, sorry, Kawhi's won the championship three times, but... <laughs> twice. You know, twice? Yeah. Shit. 2014, 2019. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah, it's twice. Anyway, you, you've given him a few pre-seasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, to why? Uh, to why? I don't even, wasn't even going to talk about him. But um, Tatum, for now, is not graduated into that tier yet. We'll see, though, in game six or seven. I'm not going to give up on him or the Celtics, although I'd like them to lose. Anything else? I, you know what? I'm really happy for Clay Thompson to see that... Cause He's like, apart from defensively, like being a defensive monster, offensively, you could argue he's like 80% back in terms of if you... He's nowhere if, near it on defense. If Offense, you, he's... If you watch Clay Thompson before these three years ago, yeah. he had fucking shocking games. Yeah. He was one of those guys... That, that photo of him when they win the championship or whatever, and it's like fouled out. And it's like one or uh, five points or whatever yeah. it is. He he will drop sixty points in twenty nine minutes or whatever that was, yeah. and then the next four he did that. That's yeah. up. That, that was Clay Thompson, and it goes in the category of shooters hit um, form slumps. I reckon he's about eighty percent. That his three point shots get in there, but he's yeah. not doing anything. Like he's he used to be able to drive and take it to the basket, mm. which he can't do anymore. He does. He just he simply so looks weaker. He's, he's still getting like he he'll hit. You hit twenty every now and then. It'll hit mm. twelve to fourteen some games, but he doesn't put pressure on the defense anymore. Yeah, was like he's still a good enough shooter that any space he'll hit it. But defensively, you're not stressing about Clay like yeah. you used to. But thankfully, you know, because yeah, because Looney Draymond, def- they they've actually for all their movement and all this, the same thing goes for their rotations and their actual personnel like they, they move tactically but also now you know Steph isn't your two-way player even though he's sort of a must play all the time um Looney does Looney does a lot of everything played great in game four I think Looney's a better defender than people credit him for mm. and I think they've gone not to the full extent that Boston has but I think they're like all right switchability is everything and they've got Wiggins who can switch they've got Draymond who can switch they've got um, Looney, who can switch out on the perimeter, we've seen multiple times where he's stopped Tatum and Brown. Obviously, he's probably not as consistently doing that like as Rob Williams might be, for example. But they've that's the modern NBA, I think, is having guys that can switch everything. Yeah, they've got Peyton for that reason exactly, and that's what they've tried to bring in over the last two years, I think. But um, uh, apart from all the switching and stuff, in general, like Paul's not a great defender. Paul like, fucking sucks. Like a pretty terrible defender. But he's great on offense, yeah. and they need him for that offense. Yeah. Wiggins, Those minutes where Steph's off the floor. Wiggins, man, imagine, I said it earlier. Imagine if Wiggins and Paul were meshed into one player, or Wiggins and Clay. The series would be over mm. because that the output. That, and yes, Wiggins is still scoring his twenty something points sometimes, but really his defense. It's really sort of one way in my eyes. I don't care about the points, Wiggins. And Paul, one way. Clay, sort of one way. Draymond, so one way. You know, you saw the the pulling of him in game four. Um, Gary Payton, the second, is um, one way defensive. It's And they're finding a way to... Steve Kerr is coaching his heart out, you know, like quickly just changing, changing different lineups and stuff like that. Bielitsa has impressed me. Bielitsa has held his own on the defensive end. Can't believe it. Fuck. Uh, I, I want the Warriors to win, but I and I, I used to like him, but then he's really snubbed the sixes. So I'd like for him to lose, but at the same time, I want them to win. But he's a great stretch 4-5, and he's ho- they're going at Bielitsa when it's like, hey, um, go at Jordan Poole. He's over there. But um, Bielitsa, great on the defensive end, holding his own. Um I wouldn't say great, but impressing us more than we expected. As in, when I say great... Great effort. I mean, great because the Celtics are going at him because they would think that he's, you know, terrible. And he's held his own. So, I don't know. Even with all that being said, and we didn't touch much on the Celtics, I don't know. What do you want to say? Robert Williams is... uh, Amazing. ...hobbling around. He is... For someone on one knee... Mm. I saw this post on Twitter the other day, and it's... Who is the best help defender in the NBA? And it's always going to be Giannis. But Rob Williams is entering the conversation. I think he's still a bit of time off. But 
defenses are so wary of, you know, once you beat your man and you see him coming over, the amount of times where players look up and they kick it to the three-point line. Yeah. And his ability to guard mm. the perimeter as well. He's But unfortunately he's hobbling around. Yeah. Like and that's my biggest take. He you're right, he is actually playing exceptional for the injury. But I just I in one hand on one hand I'm thinking, God, should he be out there for the future? But I mean good on him, I guess. I mean for, for, he can't he can't make it much worse. For, but what I for pushing how many times did I say over the last like two years Boston's like, you know, a center away from competing yeah. or a big man? And I think if Boston goes on to lose a series, I think what Tatum and Brown will take away from this wouldn't surprise me if they both dominate. Like they have the best years next year. Yeah, it happens almost every time players you know make their first deep final you know playoff run, they come back so much more hungry the next year. So if they can develop like everyone sort of expected them to, great. Yeah, but if Rob Williams is the one that goes, hang on, I want to be a 2016 DeAndre Jordan, roll harder than anyone in the league, block shots. Put up a you know fourteen points per game, twelve rebounds, just dominate defensively. That's going to be the biggest thing, I think. Yep. Um, Tatum, we just talked about for a very long time. Any notes on Brown? Smart. I just want to say, I think Horford has sort of, especially I guess in the losses, has started to regress. I think Horford, showing a bit of age. Horford is the perfect example of. I will fill the role you need me to fill. And on games like game one where he hits all those shots, it's because they overloaded on Tatum and he was just open. And then they rec- like, you know, they made the coaching changes and were like, all right, let's actually focus on Hall. It does nothing. Yeah. And it's not because he's – he didn't score 20-odd points because he's the best player out there. It's just because he's so good at doing his role. So when defense is focused on him, that's just who he is now. He's 36 years old. Yeah. He's been like this for a while. Um, smart Brown. Smart's been good, not great. Mm. Um, Curry's a tricky one for him defensively because he's better against stronger guards. Um, he does he's not super quick. I've liked when Derek White's been out there on on Curry as well, but Smart's still the number one guy for him. Offensively, he's been alright. He hasn't had uh, the end of game four put up some ordinary shots, but you know someone had to. Um, no issues about what he's doing. He's still defending his heart out, playing hard. Trying to trying to draw contact when he can. Um, Jalen Brown, he's a tricky one because I think he's been at times Boston's best player in the series, but he just gets iced out of games. And I know Ime Udoka yeah. said that after game four, we need to get him the ball during fourth quarters more, you know, or, you know, towards the second half, especially because he has these hot starts constantly. And part of that is because he can't play off ball super well. Part of it is just that, at that point of the game, Tatum's like, all right, this is my time. So, yeah. And I think, like we keep saying, series isn't over, but if they do go and lose this this series, that's going to be the development. It's working out how we can get those two to play together because they are playing together like exceptionally well. And it's mm. people during the season, we, we've got to trade one of them, and that was never the case, but they're still not getting the best out of each other. It's like an 80% sort of thing. They can work out a way just to just be putting pressure on the defense at all times, but both of them. Like, there's always one of them going to work and one of them sort of waiting around the corner. Yeah. If they're both doing what Steph Curry does, you know, just keep moving, run corner to corner. There was one in game four that it was a perfect example of how well Steph moves with the ball where he drove into the paint, passed it to Gary Payton, the second, in the corner, and then ran to that exact corner and yeah. just, just gives it to him. Yeah. No other player in NBA history has ever done that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's if those two can keep moving, then the floor opens up and for def- Rob de- Williams. The defender's not expecting to play like that. Yeah. That's just crazy. That that was insane. Did Steph um Steph did a um uh today, just today, just just I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. Towards the end, he caught the ball, pretended to shoot, sort of jumped and then dribbled. Do you remember towards no. it? Isn't that travel? I, I thought it, it is, was yeah. travel. Yeah, and, it is. and can't leave both, no can't leave one batted it. an eye. He must have done it in a legal way yeah. because he sort of did that and he's like, oh, oh bounce. I'm like, oh. Everyone's already so focused on him shooting. They've yeah. up. <laughs> it was odd seeing Steph hesitate. There was multiple times yeah. down the stretch where he was open and pump faked and then was like, oh, I should have shot that. And then they passed it off. I don't know how. I, let's see these last two games, but... I don't know if the... The Warriors role players aren't winning another Warriors game Warriors can afford, it's, that's right. No, they're not winning the game in Boston. I don't know if the Warriors can afford two whole 
Steph not himself games. Yeah. Uh, they can't. So that's that's crazy because shooter slumps. He has to get out of it quick. He has to get out of it now. Um, but you do have game six clay heading to Massachusetts. Are you at all worried about that? No. Nah. <laughs> you gotta say it's or he does heat up for the it. fact that he acknowledges it is what annoys me most because but it's he like, does but he does and that's the thing because if he up. believes it, then it's you know he's he might not miss a shot. Statistically, he's no better in game six than any other games. It's just that he's got some very memorable ones. Well, I just, and that's he the thing. does heat yeah. up. He does it this some, season, I think. He's done it this season. It's the one against the 2016 OKC game. That was what started it. And it's like, is if he thinks it, then that's the worrisome bit. And he, I know he does. Other than that, if he misses you know, his first five shots, mm. so be it. Yeah. Well, just sorry, one last bit on Brown. Can I ask? Is there any chance he can add a bit more Jamal Crawford to his game? <laughs> can he or not? Because that'd be he's, good. He has some, like, at times, he's got some of the best handles in the NBA. Like, mm. some of the crossovers he does, and I think it's partly because he almost loses the ball and then recovers it. Yeah. But he gets, like. he gets defenders to, like, bite on some of his crossovers like no one else can in the NBA. And then he has games where he just dribbles into his foot. But on that point, and you made a good point about it, it actually doesn't look like he even knows what he's doing. Yeah. Can he... That's going Do to you be, think he can every, get to a level like Jamal Crawford or any of these gods of like the handle? Not Jamal, but he can improve it. Can, but can he get to a point where he walks into the court when he's 27, 8 or 28, and he sees any anyone in front of him and he says, I'm getting to the ring. I'm going to dribble you or I'm going to slice you into an oblivion. And if you're, if you're not going to sort of stay off me, I'm going to... I, th- I honestly think he can get not to Jamal Crawford levels, but mm. to the point where it's no longer a weakness. So like when he came into the league, any time he put the ball on the floor, it was a turnover. Yep. And every year it's improved. And I think in the playoffs, this is the first time where it's like, oh yeah, it 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 feels like it's twenty eighteen again. But it's it's what three times a game, maybe. Like it's not that bad. Obviously, three turnovers a game is killing you, but it's not like he has the ball at forty possessions a game when he's dribbling. Yeah. So it's not as bad as people seem. It's just eliminating those live ball turnovers that lead to fast rate points every time. Yeah. How good was Gary? How good was Gary Payton with the steals? All right. Anyway, let's get on to this week's segment. I don't think I've said yet, and I don't think I said it at all last episode. If you're new to the show, hit that subscribe button and that notifications bell. Follow us or subscribe to us on whatever you're listening to, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and give a five-star rating on there. Really helps the show. JL, let's get into this week's segment. So last time we did a segment, we did a combined eight-man rotation for this NBA Finals, for this Warriors and Celtics. And for today's segment, we're taking the advantage. There's not going to be many times where you can take advantage of a two-team matchup like in the news. Um, We're taking the advantage of it to do Celtics versus Warriors combined all-time starting five. All-time. So I'm very looking forward to the way this goes. This was more difficult than I expected. Mm. I, I, I think I said to you before the show, I've got pretty much four... Maybe three, but I think four must-haves. And then there's one sort of then we can shuffle it around. I'm interested to hear yours. Okay. At the one, Stephen Curry. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Peyton Pritchard, man. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Jesus. (laughs) Your acting is fucking great. It's It's gotten better. But... There may be a way to put him at the two later on, but I think the one. This is the thing. If if we're going traditional, <laughs> he has to be the one. He's the he one. He has to be. Okay. So we've got an agreement. Honourable mention? Bob Cousy. Bob Cousy. And that that's, yeah, that's that, honestly what I was... That, that's the only one. That's what I was the talking next, about. The next one up story Rondo almost. like. So do you want to put a, a, an honourable line through Bob Cousy right now? That's my only other one. Yeah. He's honourable mention. He's not getting in, unfortunately. Bob Cousy is an honourable mention. Okay, because that was okay. So Steph is cemented at the one. Yeah. Now, these, I think it's like yeah. Anyway, at the two, I actually don't have like a solid. 
This was probably the most... Like, there's a lot of players that you could... If we weren't doing, you know, set positions, you could yeah. put so many players into this position. Yeah. But if we're going shooting guards, I'm going Sam Jones. Okay. I didn't have Sam Jones even Who on have you list. got? Clay? Well, there's the option to put KD there. Do you want to put a line through that? Yeah. Okay. So definitely not KD at the two. I've got... Here's my options. I didn't put Sam Jones at all. Um, Hondo played the two and the three. That was one. He, I checked that out. And John he, when, I, when I wrote it down, I had Havlicek in there initially. Mm. Played more seasons as small forward. It, okay. was, it was like 70% of his season small forward. And I thought, well, if I'm going to try and be traditional, That's good. I'm going to have to go away from I had, it. I didn't go that far looking up. So, well then, but then there's... Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Clay Thompson. But Clay Thompson was like... Paul Pierce is a three. Okay. I thought about Ray, but he didn't have his best years as, at Boston. He was good, but he was best as a buck and a Sonic. Mostly a Sonic. Um, what? Oh, fuck. A supersonic. <laughs> I thought you were referring to like nicknames for like no. players like 3 and D. I'm but thinking, what the fuck as is good a as Sonic? Clay, as good as Clay Thompson's been, he's never been the best player on his team, which you don't have to be to make an all-time mm. starting five. But Sam Jones, 10-time NBA champion. Doesn't mean much to me. Five-time NBA All-Star. Sorry, sorry, can I just... Uh, what I just replied to you just then. You know me. For me, I want this team to, to win. Mm. And when I one day make like my top 50 or whatever, it'll be... I'm going to cop a lot of shit because mine will be on... I'm going to try my best to actually study it properly like I tried to do here. I want peak of the powers in the jersey. In the, well, for yeah. here, peak of the powers in the jersey. So I'll even though I'll Sam... <laughs> Sam Jones. Even though Sam Jones might have been part of the fucking... The Celtics that won everything. There's a lot of Celtics. We could have all Celtics, yeah. right? Is Sam Jones really yes. better than... So Havlicek definitely is going to be as a, as a three... Is Sam Jones definitely... All so his best season, he put up 26 points per game, five rebounds, three assists. And it was uh, between him and him and Clay Thompson, and I'm taking Sam Jones. Of the Boston... He led Boston in scoring five times in their championship years. And it translates? He would be better than Clay Thompson and Ray I Allen? think so. I mean, how, I sort how, of how do you know? I dismissed Sam Jones in terms of... I just looked towards the other ones when I was studying... Havlicek was the one that I think he's the better player of the two. And if you want to be fluid in positions, then yeah, we can. Do you want to skip past two for now? I think we might have to. If it's this contentious, I think let's skip past it. Because maybe we can put Havlicek there. Was it 70% of the seasons? Hang on, I'll, I'll, bring it up <laughs> I'll bring it up again. Where did you find such a stat? It's password reference. John Havlicek. And that oh, was, does it have like the listing yeah. of the... Um, and the best thing about these back in the day is that actually played their position. It wasn't like now where Le, LeBron's yeah. listed as a small forward and he's point guard, you know? Um, he played... The area season is going to... List them off. Small forward, small forward, shooting guard, small forward, small forward, shooting guard, shooting guard, shooting guard. Small forward, 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 small forward. Hmm. There was a lot of shooting guard in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, you could. He, ob he was obviously talented enough to play a combo guard, combo, like, you know, but it depends how you want to. Let's skip it for now. Let's okay. skip two for now. But that makes... It's fucked. That makes shit really interesting. Okay. At the three, depending on what you're looking for... I mean, I think I've just got listed here... I only bother putting one in. KD or Bird? Larry Bird. Okay. Okay. Mm, I know we're going traditional, but I think we might have to use... One of them. No, 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 as in like, as in, yeah, when they've played in, yeah. two positions. Okay, so if we're going bird, I sorry, so let me just start. I can't leave KD off this list, off this team. I can't leave KD off this team. You've got to know that. So. Between bird and KD, who are we going? At, so you're only allowing KD No, but just, just for the time being. 
Between Bird and KD, I think I would, for now, f- at this moment, I would go Bird. Good. For, for I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said right. that. I would have ripped into you. Just because of mentality stuff, brain stuff. 1988 season, <laughs> 29.9 points per game. Here we go. 9.3 rebounds, 6.1 assists. And I think 1. if Bird steals, was... I think, one block. I think if Bird was raised... If he played now, he'd be putting up 33 a game. Mm. Because it's a brain thing. It's hard to translate, but that's an easy one because I think Bird was very like... He like he was a very like... I know I don't know if you're the ones that don't like the word. I don't think you do, but killer. I think Bird was a very... Is a killer. He... Probably the most clutch player of all time. Mm. Larry Bird. Okay. And so, one of the biggest so arseholes for now, to play. So for now, Bird at the three... At the four, I had either Bird or KG. I put in Kevin McHale. No, 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 no. You got to, no, no, no. You got to look past this stuff. You got to look past the 10 rings and all this fucking shit. He didn't have 10 rings. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. I'm looking at you. Kevin McHale, don't give me the numbers. <laughs> Three time NBA champion, seven time All Star. This is all for Boston as well. If we were putting in. KG had, 2008 was Defensive Player of the Year for Boston. Mm-hmm. And then probably had, what, th- four, five All-Star games as a Celtic. Wondering, we're not including his Minnesota days. His best scoring season was you know, 18 points per game or something like that. But peak of the powers in the, in the Boston jersey. Peak of the powers, Mikhail was better in terms of their best seasons. <sighs> but KG was a defensive player. So was Mikhail. All NBA first team defense multiple times. 26 points per game, 10 rebounds. Um, but we're also, part of my no, 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 is that Mikhail, because we've got, we've got positions here to fill in. Do you have KD? No. We've got to but like KD. I said to you before we went on, I went very traditional in terms of positions. Okay. Oh, that's why. So you must have Bird over KD is yeah. your point. Right. Well, we But if to... if we were going to try and... If we were going flexible, I'll put KD at the three, Bird at the four, and leave Mikhail out. That's... It has to be that. It has to be that because you cannot leave... We should have done... We should have done two. Best, <laughs> best for each position. We should have done best for each position and then best starting five you can make. Yeah, well, starting five. <laughs> <laughs> I know your point. But unfortunately, you can't leave Kevin Durant out. As much as Kevin Durant has a lot of negative surrounding yeah, him, the clouds. Fuck KD, you stupid bitch. I'm so sorry, but even just those... It Was it two years or three? No, it was three years. Yeah. But the injury in the last one. Those three years is better than most anyone here. And I'm, again, I'm sorry, but it's all about the translation and the peak of the powers. KD would absolutely feast in... For example, the Kevin McHale times. And you know that. Right. So, are we now going to... So, <laughs> I know it's hurting you to leave out, like, uh, Sam Jones. But are we now going to... So, of, we're going Curry, Havlicek, Durant, Bird. Well, that's still... Oh, well, sorry. Well, then that, I guess, still leaves open Sam Jones for or Havlicek. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, that's fine. But we're going... Three bird, at uh, three Durant, four bird. Right. God. Can't leave KD off this. Let's go to five before we go back to two. Now. <laughs> He's the hardest one. I was literally chatting to Bronx Cheer Football's Aiden, because he's a Boston fan, classic. And he tried to hit me with, not that his uh, basketball knowledge is on my level. I hope he's watching. He's probably not. Um, he tried to hit me straight away. Oh, Russell over Will. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Will played against children. That's what he said. (laughs) Plumbers and milkmen. Um, did you know that you would know? Did anyone here know that Wilt actually came into the NBA after Russell? They played in the same time. So as much as the defensive gap is pretty significant, and yes, Wilt played more minutes. The offensive gap is too big. You can't. And and Russell's accolades, like, sorry, 
His 11 rings were part of... I said to Aiden, I said, okay, 11 rings. Is LeBron not a better player than KD and Steph because of 17 and 18? The Warriors were the Warriors. The Celtics were the Celtics. Wilt, the offensive gap is too much bigger. It's too big to Bill. Even though Bill's defense is way better, the offensive gap's too big. I went Bill Russell. I know you did. I, I, that's why I'm saying all this, because I know you did. Played against each other 94 times. <laughs> Bill Russell, 57 wins, 37 losses, and obviously vice versa. My whole point still stands. He was on the, the dynasty. He held Wilt to about, during his peak of the powers as well, about 10 points less per game than any other player in the NBA did. Defensive. He's probably yeah. the best defensive player then. There's a reason why when players voted for MVP, mm. Bill was getting it over Wilt every year. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You're not going to budge? Because I I (laughs) feel like the same. I feel like I can't budge either. I feel like Wilt is one of those ones where... But they did play in the same time. That's the... That's what I can't... What do you mean? all this... Sorry, go on. If you're going to... Say they didn't play in the same time. They did, so... Yeah, exactly. They did, so... Did I say they didn't? They did. Yeah. And my point is, for everyone who, like, talks down... Just... Sorry, no, no. Let me clarify. In this conversation, Bill versus Wilt... Are you trying to say if you played against kids and so did... Bill. Yes. Yeah. And Bill was better than Wilton. Those games they played together. Bill was There's, on the Warriors. Uh, LeBron and Wilt are the same guy. There's a reason he's 11-time NBA champion. Because Bill was on the Warriors. And then Wilt, I'm translating for the current day people. But that's true, isn't it? Isn't it? Of course it's doing That's it. right. Yeah, but if... The first thing you brought up is how many wins Bill had over Wilt. Then uh, the second thing I brought up was every player... Voted for Bill in MVP. Has winning never had to do anything with the MVP voting? Wilt was going to the finals those years. I know. It was not like he was wasn't was on a shit team. I know, but I, I think you'll find that if Wilt was in Bill's team and Bill was in Wilt's team, I think Wilt might be the fucking goat. And then the other, if we're going best team you can possibly make, you got. Four of the best offensive players of all time. Mm. Do you really need Wilt Chamberlain there? If you want the best <laughs> team of all time, you are getting the best defender you can possibly get. <laughs> no, 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 no. I let you last time. Last time I didn't say a word. But again, you know how every time we do like a segment like this, I always have to be like, we're not on the same wavelength. You were purely going off like actual, like if we're going to send this team yeah. out to play. I should have mentioned to you, the way that these segments and internet <laughs> things go is that we're just trying to make the best starting eight, or the best eight eight men. I let it go. I'm like, I'm not even going to say say anything. Um, we're going to put these players here because it, it flows and it works as if we're going to send them out. I'm not doing that today. It's about the best players, and I think you know deep down... Bill Russell. <laughs> I, I will always have Bill Russell higher than Will Chamberlain. Oh... Uh. You can you can edit the little TikTok graphic and put it on whoever you want. I won't look at it anyway. <laughs> but I'm ta- I'm going Bill Russell to my grave. Before I um done because I've got much study to do of the past and stuff like that because I like and I will always say that until I've done the study. But I've done a bit of study about Bill and Wilt, and you know I'm not a numbers guy, so I just try and found as much footage as I could. And it's just simple. It's just simple. They played in the same time. And the gap offensively is too much. It's too big. It's too big. Oh, Will played 48 minutes. Fucking the gap offensively is too big. We're, we're at a stalemate here. You're not going to come, ar- come I will, over? I will never budge on this argument. No, no matter if it was with you or anyone. So how, how, how like... He's the greatest winner in basketball for a reason. He's what? The greatest winner in basketball oh. for a reason. So you think, so if Wilt is, uh, they swap positions, does Wilt not have 11 rings? Don't no. say it. No. 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 Don't say it. There's a reason Wilt changed teams. People didn't like playing with him. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> he was the world's he, biggest arsehole. His ability. Michael Jordan was the world's biggest arsehole. And he got to the top. Wilt didn't get there that often. No. Did he win, what, one ring was it? <laughs> oh, he won two rings. Was it? Mm. Four There's, MVPs. 
there's a reason why people put Bill Russell higher in their standings. There's a reason why he won all these rings. There's a reason why he won more MVPs in the same era. It's because he was on the dynasty. Players loved him. Players respected <laughs> him more. Coaches respected him more. Okay. He but- came into the NBA. It changed it completely. Played defense because no one even blocked a shot before he came along. People didn't like Michael Jordan. And they, even though because they were on his team, you know, and there was the, the Pippen and the Rodman, you know, all the troubles and stuff like that. And there was coaching, blah, blah, blah. But because of the ability, if Wilt was on the fucking Celtics, you've got to stop. If Wilt is on the Celtics. No. He's got 11 rings. No. Just because of, of the way he is. Just because I don't think Wilt... Will- uh, will help teams win like Bill Russell did. But he's uh, he's he's a twenty eight or twenty seventeen Westbrook, putting up numbers, and that's it. Westbrook's numbers aren't anywhere near. Anyway, all right, we'll just have to. I thought you'd come around. You I really did, thought I'd come around on that? Like I I thought you would because I thought you <laughs> you your, your bit of homework you did you bit of we watched some footage. I just thought that like I've been arguing with people about this for years. When you posed me, like when I posed you these points, you'd be like, oh yeah. The first thing you brought up was the wins. Oh, he beat yeah. him. He's again. He's on the Warriors, and then Le- uh, Wilt is the LeBron on the Cavs. Is Curry and KD better than LeBron? No, God no. But. There's a reason. 11 times is not a fucking easy feat. There's a reason you won 11 it's times. because of the team. The team, like, as good as they were, there was a lot of players that chopped and changed in there. I know, but it's still... He, he was the common denominator every single year. But there were still nowhere near as many teams back then, right? Mm-hmm. The Boston Celtics, as you experienced with your AFL team, the Essendon Football Club, who denied entry to my team, to the uh, VFL when they first started it... <laughs> It's, it's factors like this. How many teams liked, for example, the Spurs weren't around yet? Look at what the Spurs do now. The Boston Celtics were like the epicenter, and then the Lakers came, were the epicenter of like actually producing the highest level. You think that if... Well, you, look, you look back at those Lakers teams, now you mention them, and they've got like eight Hall of Famers. Hmm. And they couldn't beat Boston because of Bill Russell. That's wow. Okay, now you, you went <laughs> you went back to Bill. I was gonna say because Boston is such a well-run factory, or oh, they were. And all the credit always goes to Bill Russell. Yeah, because he was the center. Center was the biggest position. If Wilt was there, Wilt would do the same thing and more. If Wilt was there, the team would have blown up in after about two seasons. <laughs> all right, I'm I'm content with that because you're not really saying much. That's sort of. I'm a, can, I'm an ability guy. It's you, like you it's, can you can put whatever on the. It's graphic. like my <laughs> my my support for KD and Kawhi, and even even Joel to an extent, you know. Yeah, I'm an ability guy more than I'm other stuff. However, geez, this Warriors team <laughs> right now, they're really well put together in terms of the personalities. Fuck them. <laughs> if um, if Wilt was there, that would lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the two. Have a check or take your pick. Sam you can put Burns. put whatever you like on the graphic. Put. <laughs> Put uh, I'll gi- I'll give Delonte you West there if you want to. <laughs> oh, no, not him. Um, <laughs> I'll give you this. We'll Havlicek's a better player. Sam Jones and Wilt. Sam Jones? No, no, no. Championships, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying like right. Sam Jones, you can have him in there in the two and then I get to put Wilt. Have, have a check and Russell. There's more Celtics in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is, can I get that deal from you? No, fuck Sam no. Jones and Wilt? You can have whatever you want. I'm not looking at the stupid graphic regardless. Okay, right now. So we got Steph Curry, um, one. Uh, KD, three. Bird, four. Who knows at five. With that team, what do you want to do? Have the check or Sam Jones? You're the Celtics guy. Have the check's the better player of the two. Now you choose. Have the check's the better player of the two. So you're willing to put him two? But not by as much as people would think, I think. Sam Jones, underrated through history. Yep. Okay. So have the check. Hondo. Okay. So, this is our combined all-time Warriors. Starting six. Oh, my God. Look at that time. Jeez. That went too long. Okay. That's good. Th- this is our combined all-time um, starting five for Warriors and Celtics. At the one, Stephen Curry. Scrub. At the two, uh, John Havlicek. Superstar. At the three, Kevin Durant. Bitch. At the four, Larry Bird. Greatest all-time. And at the five... You choose. <laughs> Will Chamberlain and uh, Bill Russell. Let us know in the comments. Your starting five 
combined all time. JL, predictions for the rest of the series? Who's, he, who's head coach? Oh, that one I didn't bother studying because you guys would have a thousand. Right, right now back. Yep. That. Prediction for the series, Boston in seven. Boston in seven. Well, what else am I going to say? <laughs> <sighs> if I had to predict from here. I think, wait, honestly, though, I think Boston wins six. I said that earlier. I just I feel like Boston's going to come out and win game six. And like we said earlier, anything can happen in game I'm seven. I'm literally going to say, this is crazy. I'm going to say Boston in seven. To help the universe, Correct. overcorrect. <laughs> help the universe, help the Warriors. Boston in seven. You heard it here from JL and myself. Hit uh, subscribe, notifications bell. JL, I'll who are you actually picking? You got to go Golden State, surely. I don't know. I actually don't know. Like I said before, I don't know. I feel like if it's a, if it gets to seven, it's a flip of the coin. Yeah. Because game sevens are. Yeah. Bizarre. I actually have no idea. I really don't. Um, but. Boston in seven. Wilt at the five. Talk to you next week. When he's sticking you and taking all your money.